Hi guys, I'm Jenna and I write science fiction and fantasy novels and I help you put the magic back into writing. Romance, writing advice to avoid. There's a lot of advice on the internet and I'm here to tell you what you should probably just not pay attention to when it comes to writing advice, specifically in the romance category. This could be for writing advice for romance the genre or writing advice for your romance subplots. Number one, anything that encourages you to promote unhealthy relationships. And there's a difference between writing an unhealthy relationship and writing and promoting an unhealthy relationship. Difference is, is that if it's an unhealthy relationship that you are promoting, that means you are encouraging the dynamic that is happening that might be toxic and you're saying that it is actually a healthy relationship. So anything that is promoting you to do so, most likely just for the clout of it and to piss people off and to upset people so they talk about your books more, looking at you Colleen Hoover, then maybe don't. And there's another tip too, is to avoid conflating the two things together between writing a healthy relationship and promoting an unhealthy relationship. So avoid trying to conflate the two with each other. And if you are writing an unhealthy relationship for a reason for your plot, then consider making sure that your stance on the relationship is clear and that the book is very clear on the fact that it's not a healthy, good relationship and it shouldn't be promoted. It is more of a critique of the relationship or something else like that. Because I cannot tell you the number of times there's just been books and literature and TV shows, movies, etc. that are just rampant with really unhealthy and toxic relationships that are super abusive and people go fucking ham on them because the creators advertise them as being a good relationship. And sure, some people have the wherewithal to understand that they are interested in this relationship solely because they find it interesting and they don't want to emulate it in their real life. However, especially if you're targeting media towards a younger audience, then they do not understand that and then they take that experience with them throughout life thinking that an abusive relationship is actually normal. And even sometimes with grown ass adults, they still don't understand this. So just be aware of your audience and who you're targeting. Next tip is any heteronormative bullshit. Love is love, my people. So anything that is giving you romance advice and it is very black and white of she and he and ba and ba, anything at all like that, be careful where you're getting that advice from because if it's that heteronormative and if it's giving you kind of like an icky feeling of like, this is all describing one's very specific type of romance and it just doesn't feel like it's right for you, or if you just feel like, oh, they clearly only read one type of book ever, then maybe consider not getting advice from that location. Especially if you are writing a story that has a bi, gay, etc. ace character in it, whether or not they're in a relationship or not, if you are reflecting the LGBTQ plus community inside of your writing and you're getting your advice from someplace that is not welcoming to them, just in general across the board, even if it's not romance related, then maybe don't get your advice from that location. So one, why would you want to support somebody like that? Two, you're trying to reflect LGBTQ plus people in your writing in an accurate way, whether or not you're a part of that community or not. So getting your stuff and your enc encouragement or your advice from a place that is not welcoming to those people, one, why the fuck would you wanna do it? Two, they don't need your money, they don't need your time. And three, they're probably going to tell you or give you some sort of advice that is counterintuitive to you being welcoming to the LGBTQ plus community. Anyone who says that once your couple in the book gets together, the story dies. This is an issue that doesn't occur when there's a plateau in tension after a couple gets together. This is typically the same type of people though that tell you you should break up your characters in the third act and have the third act breakup trope happen, which people are very frustrated with. If you've heard any of my other videos from this month, I'm hammering in this point in every video. Typically if you're writing in just the romance genre, then yeah, if the couple gets together, everybody knows they're together. If there's no other plot points, then yeah, your story's kind of ramped up and the story kind of dies and you're, it's the end of the book. This is usually why romance books are only one book because there's not enough tension of back background things happening to keep the reader's attention after the couple gets together, which is when the book plateaus and it dies. However, if you're writing in any other genre, there's so much other attention that could be happening. If you're writing fantasy, sci-fi, there's things like aliens, dragons, etc. There's crazy shit happening and that should be impacting your couple and making them have this push and this pull of them trying to stay together while there's also tension trying to pull them apart. And so keeping that tension rolling through multiple books or after they get together, whatever it may be, is key. And you don't have to just have your couple only get together and then break up every time you want to have tension or push them getting off, t push them getting off, <laughs> push them getting together until like the end of the book series. You don't have to do that. You just have to know that there is going to be a roller coaster of emotions going on with the couple that's impacted by the plot. And anybody who tells you otherwise probably doesn't know how to write a compelling romance after the couple gets together. So they try to tell you not to write a compelling romance after the couple gets together. But guess what? We need to see different aspects and different parts of relationships and different in a, across a large timeline. Because not everybody wants only 
them to have the tension prior to them getting together and get together and then everything ends. Typically is what we see a lot of. The more different types of relationships we can see in general, the better honestly for the writing community and the better for readers everywhere. Avoid getting your writing advice regarding romance from any medium person, etc. that tries to convince you that the romance plot and the main plot of your story are completely two separate things. This usually ends up happening to writers where they think they're two different things and they think that they don't affect each other and then you typically have a book at the end where they're like, it just felt like the romance was tacked on afterwards, I wasn't that immersed in it, it didn't really make sense. This is how you have it when you have the romance completely separate from the main plot of the book. Your main plot is going to affect your romance, your romance is going to affect the main plot. They should be attached to each other and you cannot untangle them. They should be plotted around each other and interact with one another so that there is a synergy happening, not just, oh I kind of just threw the romance on at the last minute and it doesn't really make sense. Remember, plot affects your characters, characters affect your plot. If they're in a romance together, that romance also is a dynamic between characters that also affects the plot. Same thing if you're writing a friendship, that friendship is going to impact the plot. If you're writing enemies, those things are going to impact the plot. So remember, it's not just plot that affects the characters and characters who affect the plot. It's characters' relationships with one another that affect the plot as well. And those relationships between each other can affect other relationships between each other, which can also affect the plot. That's the last of the advice I have for you, but comment down below if you have any more tips or if any of these you found interesting. And if you're looking for more romance writing tips, feel free to watch the video that I have linked at the end. But I'll catch you guys next time, so remember to subscribe for writing videos every Friday to help you put the magic back in writing. Catch you guys next time, so bye!